Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. It is an exciting day, especially for me here on the homestead, because we're gonna be doing something today that I've been wanting to do really since last summer when we put up our new greenhouse. When we lived in Arizona on our property, we had, I think, what, about almost 15 citrus trees, 12 or 13 citrus trees on our property, and I absolutely loved having fresh citrus. But since we moved to Missouri, that just hasn't been an option. The climate here just isn't good for it. So I've been doing my research over the winter, and today, in these boxes right here, we are going to be planting some citrus. If you'll remember, uh, last summer when we put up the greenhouse, Kevin mentioned that he really wanted a lemon tree. Uh, and specifically, I think you were looking at a Meyer lemon right. tree. But you've, you've changed your mind. Right. Now, I may still do a Meyer lemon at some point in the future, but after doing more research, there were two other things that I found that I think are going to do even better here. That is uh, what are in these boxes right here. One is called a Satsuma tangerine tree, and the other is a key lime tree. Now, tangerine trees were our favorite when we lived in the Phoenix area. And we had some huge tangerine oh, trees. Oh, they were fantastic. We missed them. I canned so much tangerine juice, you guys. It's uh, crazy. Now, limes are one of my favorite citrus fruits. And right before we left our uh, urban homestead in the Phoenix area, we had planted a lime tree. And so I never got to enjoy the fruit off that tree. So I am very excited that we're gonna try it here on our new homestead in the Ozarks. Now these citrus trees we're gonna have to plant in pots because even though the Satsuma orange or the Satsuma tangerine will take a little bit below freezing. It says it can go below freezing for a couple hours. As you know, here in the Ozarks, we get a lot colder than that. We'll have days where it's below freezing. So uh, we are gonna plant these in pots and we're gonna have to move them inside of the sprout house or something like that over the winter next year. But all summer long and spring and fall, they'll be able to be either in the greenhouse or actually outside. So we are excited to open these boxes no, up. No, we haven't opened them yet. We're no. waiting for you guys to do that. Yep, and to get them planted today. Now I ordered these trees from a company on Etsy. We're in no way affiliated with the company, but the company's name is A to, let's see, a, a to Z Plant Company, I think is what it's called. Um, you can check them out on Etsy. Now, they had very good reviews, so I am hoping that these are gonna be very good trees. It says, stop, please open and remove the bottom from this box, of this box. Oh, open and remove from the bottom of this box. Guess I'm doing it the wrong way then. Well, that was nice of them to put that warning on there to stop people like me from doing it wrong. So let's open this, set this up here. Now, I don't know which one is which inside of these boxes. The key lime tree didn't give me an option as to size, but the uh, Satsuma tree I picked, it was supposed to be a four to five foot tree. So we'll see, we'll see what they look like. And these aren't bare root, they're supposed to have the root ball with them. So, okay, it looks like this is the thornless key lime. See what it looks like. Oh, it looks like it actually has blossoms on it. Look at that, you guys. Can you believe what you can get through the mail these days? Isn't that awesome? Are you excited, Sarah? I'm very excited. I, I guess I'm so used to seeing bare root trees with no leaves on them that it kind of surprised me that it comes with leaves, but that's really exciting. <laughs> it is really exciting. It's like exciting. instant gratification. <laughs> it is. We just skipped two years. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna set this one off to the side. This one I'm gonna open from the bottom. This is the one I'm excited about. I'm excited about both of them, honestly. There's nothing better on a hot summer day than limeade, honestly. There we go. There's the tangerine. I think the lime tree is actually bigger than the tangerine tree. Now it says that we should be able to keep both of these pruned to only about six feet tall and maybe, you know, four or five feet wide. So that's good. That'll be perfect for what we want to do. We're going to let these sit in the shade. We're going to jump in the UTV. We need to go get some of our big tubs 
uh, out of the orchard area, the ones that we grew in last year out there, we're gonna bring up, we're gonna mix some of the soil together, we're gonna mend it with some rabbit manure and other things, and then we're gonna get these guys planted. But you guys, there's something else going on on the homestead today. Uh, two days ago, we had our very first calf born of the season. She is a very precious uh, heifer calf, which is great because we're trying to build up the number of cows that we have here on the homestead. So this heifer will be a permanent resident. She'll be staying forever. Um, and so we're excited about that. But there's another cow that looks like she's gonna have her calf today. Uh, she actually was having some discharge this morning, looked really uncomfortable. So throughout this video, we may go uh, check to see how all the cows are doing and see if she's had her calf yet. For now, we're gonna go look for those pots. Let's get going. We decided that the best place for these trees right now, at least, is gonna be at the back of the greenhouse. We've got everything else so filled up, so this is gonna be the best place. So we brought our pots back here. Now, what we're going to do, as you can see in these pots, we've got some just amazing uh, compost. This compost has actually been aged now for, well, this, uh, this is the third summer that we've had it. Um, but it's compacted down a lot in the pot. So we're gonna, we're gonna fluff it up a little bit and then we're gonna add more, of course. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take my auger. This is the same one that I used to drill holes in the garden. Now you guys, it's super windy out today. Hopefully our microphones normally do a good job, but if there is wind noise, uh, I apologize, but it's a really windy day here today. All right, so we're gonna use our auger and I'm just gonna go through these just to break everything up. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. All right, now you guys, we get a lot of questions about these tubs that we grow in. These are called Crystalix tubs. They're cattle uh, protein tubs is what they are. So cattle farmers buy these. They're come filled to the top almost with a, a mineral supplement or a protein supplement. Uh, usually for over the winter is when you give these to your cattle. We give them to our cattle as well. And then after the cattle lick all of the protein supplement out, you're left with these empty buckets. A lot of farmers will just burn them or throw them in the landfill. Uh, we go around and we buy as many as we can from local farmers and we bring them home and they make the perfect tubs for growing in. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is I went to the rabbit area. And I got a five gallon bucket of rabbit manure. I'm gonna split this between the two and then we're gonna mix that in also. Now, for those of you who didn't know, rabbit manure is what's con considered a cold manure, which means you can use it fresh and it won't burn your plants. Other types of manure like steer manure, cow manure, um, chicken manure, any kind of poultry manure needs to be composted because it's a hot manure. And if you put that directly on your plants, it's going to burn the roots of your plants. But rabbit manure, goat manure, um, 
deer manure, if you could go around and collect enough of it. Uh, anything that's pelletized like that is a cold manure and you can use it fresh. All right, so I'm gonna use my auger again and we're gonna just blend this uh, rabbit manure into this compost. We're gonna start off planting uh, the tangerine tree. Take it out of here. They packaged it really well and supported it um, with two different types of stakes. And when we plant it, we're actually gonna keep both of those stakes in initially. Right. Has a nice root ball there. If you'll hold it up, I'll okay. dig a little bit of hole um, it only needs a little bit of a hole because the soil level is down pretty far. Why don't you set that in there and see? I, I think that'll be good. good. Is it in the center? I think so. Okay. All right, now we have another barrel of soil that we're going to add right, you wanna on hold the that sides. And I'll get the... Yes. Okay. I'm trying to make sure that it's. Straight. Yeah. Now this soil we're using is another bucket of um, aged compost. Still need more. Whoa. Ouch. All right, let's see how that does. Like we said, we ordered these in the mail. How, how many days did it take to get here? I ordered them on Sunday night, like late at night. So, and they came on Wednesday. So, no, they came Thursday. So three days. That's not bad. No. No, on their website, it said that they ship every Monday and Tuesday. So if you place your order, before that, you'll get it the following, you know, they'll ship out the next week. Let's add just a little bit more because there's some of these roots that. Yeah, are and I think out. it's going to settle. Yeah. Quite a few worms in here. Mm hmm. Okay. Now, if this compost packs down far again, we'll just add more. You know, over the next couple weeks or whatever. Let me see if that looks pretty straight. It does to me. Yeah, step back and look. Yeah. Now, one thing that uh, was important to us was to get citrus trees that are grafted onto really good rootstock. And these trees are grafted trees. They weren't started. They weren't started from seeds. Um, and I guess the tree overall will do better if they are grafted onto good rootstock and started from seed. I'm yeah, just... everything that I read when I was researching citrus trees said, if you if trees are started from seed, there's no guarantee it's gonna be good fruit. Even if the seeds were collected off a tree with good fruit, that grafted trees are by far the better way to go. So okay. that's what we did. So that's the tangerine tree. Yep. Let's put in the lime tree. All right. We're just going to move these just a tad closer 
to this end wall here um, just so they're a little bit more protected from the wind but not so close that they're going to touch the plastic at all. I just think that with it being so windy and they're just freshly transplanted and don't have their roots spread out to kind of hold on to the soil, I think this will be very helpful for them. That's good. Yep, then we just need to water them in. All right. Well, you guys, this is exciting. I have been missing citrus and I hope that this is gonna, you know, now I'm not fooling myself. I know we're not gonna get tons of citrus where we can can it and all of that again, but to be able to come out even just a couple times a year to pick a few pieces of homegrown citrus is gonna be amazing. All right, these are done. We're actually gonna shut the sides of the greenhouse to give these guys a break from the wind because it's so windy today. And we're gonna hop in the UTV. It's been a couple hours since we've seen the cows. We wanna go see if that one's had her baby yet. So let's go jump in the UTV and go for a ride. Before we head out to look for the cows, I just wanted to show you guys real quick the little kit that we take with us whenever we're going to look for calves. Uh, this is something I suggest everybody have. If you're going, like for us, they might be, you know, half mile away. So what we have is just a little tool kit. In here we have an ear tagger. And we have our bander. So if it's, a, if it's a, a bull calf, we can band it right away. We like to band and castrate our calves the day that they're born if we can. Some, sometimes you can't, sometimes you can't grab them or they're in an area where the mom just won't let you get them. But if we can, we always like to band the day that they're born. And then up in the top section, I just like to keep kind of the stuff that I know we might use today, which is the next two ear tags in line so if there's a calf born today it's going to be number nine and then some extra bands up here so that's it nothing real fancy we don't keep anything you know else in there just those things so that as we're down at the bottom land if we need to you know do something we have what we need with us so we started our way down to look for the cows and you can see we found them they're all the way down at the bottom of this hill right here this is one of the few areas that we can't get to by utv um, of course, that's where they decided to spend their day today. So our options are to either, uh, you know, just wait a couple hours and see if they come back up to the hay to see if they come back up to feed, or there is a hiking trail that we can take to get down there. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to wait and just see if they come back up. If they're not back up in an hour or so, we'll probably head down to see how everybody's doing. While we're waiting to see if the cattle come back up, we've got another thing that we're excited to plant in the greenhouse. We are going to be planting two container varieties of blueberries that we picked up at the store. We thought that would be really fun to give it a try. Uh, these are actually jelly bean blueberries. And uh, Kevin and I have already gotten two of these buckets that we've been using. We got them ready. In these we're doing half compost, half the bag mix that we've been using over the winter, and then rabbit manure as well. Right. Now, blueberries, as many of you know, like acidic soil. And this uh, planting medium, this dirt that we've mixed up here is not very acidic. So we do have uh, something that we're gonna be adding. We have a soil acidifier, which is essentially two different types of sulfur right. and sulfur some and gypsum. gypsum. Yep. Um, and we, there are instructions on the back of this bag uh, how, how much to sprinkle around the plant in a container. Right. So we're going to do that after we plant our plants, but we wanted to show you guys so you know that, we, yes, we are going to raise the acidity of the, of the containers. We know that that's important for uh, growing blueberries. So these are both the same variety, and they say that they're supposed to do well in our zone. Right. So, um, our, our long-term plan is to have a big blueberry patch out in the orchard area, but that's not something we're going to fit into the schedule for this year. So when we saw these container varieties at the store, these were just at Walmart, uh, we decided, what the heck, let's give it a try and see if we can get some to grow in the greenhouse. So they kind of look like a, a small kind of plug, I guess. They're a tiny little bush you can see here. 
Uh, these, according to the package, are gonna get kind of like a, a 12 inch or one foot mound in this container. And so we figure one blueberry plant per container will be just fine. We're just gonna nestle it into a hole just like that. Bring that soil around the edges and a pack it down nicely. And after that, we are going to add our soil acidifier. According to the instructions, we're supposed to add one tablespoon for every pot, for every four inches of pot diameter. Our pots are about 24 inches across, so we're adding about a third of a cup per pot. It says to do this every 60 days until you've reached the desired level of acidity in your soil. My understanding is the way that sulfur works in the soil is that it kind of like changes the actual structure of the soil to raise the acidity. It's not like a chemical that just, um, you know, raises it temporarily and then it'll go back down. So that's why you need to do it slow because once you raise it too much, uh, it's just going to be that way forever. Now that we have that all sprinkled around, uh, it's just a matter of watering it in. And we have uh, container blueberries. Hopefully we'll get a couple this year. All right, let's get that watered in. And then let's go back and check on the cows again because it's been a couple more hours and we still haven't seen them. So let's go see what's going on. All right, we're all the way down at the bottom of the hill where we have a pasture down here. We found the herd of cows. We're gonna go count them. Uh, we should have 10, so let's go see. I see one hiding up the hill right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So it looks like everybody is here. Let's go look around and make sure there hasn't been a calf. Well, we don't see any more calves, but Kevin told you that two days ago we did have our first calf born and she is over here being licked by her mom. Now you've seen a little clip of them before, but the mom, her name is Pork Chop, actually. And this calf, like Kevin said, is a heifer calf. She'll be a permanent member of our herd. We haven't named her yet, but she's so cute. Well, it looks like for now, we're just gonna have the one calf, but that other cow has to be close. We'll check on her at least one more time tonight and again, first thing tomorrow morning. You guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. And as always, really the best way you can help us here on our homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.